the next talk is Massimo Piomate. Um, he is an adjunct professor at the University of Tusha. Um, his research, um, you'll see, is very appropriate to this conference. Um, it's focused on Europe Europeanization of Italy, Italian political parties, and the European integration process, and the evolution of the Mediterranean Europe in EU history. And the title of this talk is How Many South in the EEC EU The Southern Issues in the European Integration Process. Thank you. It is my pleasure to be here today. Um, first of all, I want uh, to say thanks to to the Roman State Studies uh, Department uh, and to the Cornell Institute for, for European Studies and to Leah and Vendetta and all the staff who organized the, the conference. Uh, the studies on the evolution of the Southern Europe in the European Union are a recent field of research, mainly because a Southern dimension of the European integration began just in the 80s when, after the collapse of their autocratic regimes, Greece, Spain and Portugal joined the European Economic Community. Indeed, despite the relevance of that area in the post-World War II period, the European integration born around the Rhine border has historical reconciliation between France and Germany. Furthermore, few years after their membership, there was the fall of the Berlin Wall that suddenly led to a new European framework focusing on Central and Eastern Europe. However, in the last years, the impact of the economic crisis and the vicissitudes of Greece, the tragedies of the migrant flows in the Mediterranean Sea, more than 400 victims just in the first two months of this year, the permanent political instability of, of many southern countries, just to mention some of the main possible examples, Turning on the lights uh, uh, on this area and its relationship with the European Union and its integration process. My contribution between history and politics aims to reflect about uh, three main issues. The first one, uh, resuming the debate of the previous panel, is what exactly is in the Euro South is in the European integration process. Indeed. The first step to do is to find a definition on the map. However, this is a question difficult to answer, at least for two reasons. The first problem is that the enlargement of the European Union in the South is still ongoing. The second is that each enlargement has further enlarged and problematized the idea of South settling the step before. In fact, if it is usual to think about the Southern Europe as the group of countries formed by Italy, Spain, Greece and Portugal, and I will try to explain why afterwards, from 2004 it is necessary to include in this group Malta, Cyprus, Slovenia and from 2013 Croatia. Four very interesting newcomers that have contributed to change the idea of Southern Europe in the European Union, at least from linguistic, cultural and religious perspective. Furthermore, there are many and relevant countries on the path to join, with the status of candidate country still negotiating or waiting to start, Albania, Serbia, Macedonia, <coughs> Montenegro, and above all Turkey, that is still waiting for an answer since 1959, when Ankara started the application for membership. All potential candidate they were promised the prospect of joining when they are ready, Bosnia-Herzegovina and Kosovo. Once the enlargement process will be accomplished, if ever, there are three macro regions that could claim the designation of South of the European Union. The historical set, comprising Italy, Spain, Portugal and Greece, and extending to Malta and Cyprus. The Balkan wedge, a connecting hinge between the Mediterranean Sea the Central and Eastern Europe and Germany, and finally the Turkish frontier, limited to Turkey and their role in Northern Cyprus, as a double interface between Europe and Asia, Europe and the Middle East. 
However, the second and more challenging reason that make it difficult to define the South in the European Union is a limiting approach focused only on the national state. The institution and the development of a strong regional policy led to an erosion of sovereignty requiring to supersede a definition strictly anchored to the concept of member state, to embrace a new perspective which takes the regional dimension into greater account, as we have to consider the European integration perspective when we speak about regions and regionalism across Europe in the last decades. The clearest example of this relevance is France. If this state had a discontinuous interest towards the issues related to the south of the European Union, some French regions are strongly interested in Corsica, Provence. Furthermore, the emphasis on the regional perspective had threatened, especially from the 90s, certain historical contraposition between some, for the most part, rich regions and their central government, Catalonia or the separatism of the Northern League in the mid-90s, thus further weakening the cohesion of those states. Finally, there is not a clear answer to the question what South is in the European Union. There are many and different South, resulting from a complex interviewing of variable geometries, depending from the perspective adopted or the level of zoom used in the macro regions or the south of the regions or the south of the town. Why not? Son Dio is not Ragusa. One, no one, 100,000 of south, just to what someone will be a perfect keynote speaker for this conference. <clears throat> the second issue is once a southern country joined the European Economic Community or the European Union, what kind of relationships develops with their partners of the South? Synthetically, I have to say that very rarely they tried to set common position strategies to have a greater impact on the EU control rule. On the contrary, the members usually look at an enlargement as a treat to their status and interests. Just two examples to confirm this attitude, well represented by the displayed picture, the famous fall of Mauro Tassotti to Luis Enrique at the quarterfinals between Italy and Spain during the FIFA World Cup in the United States in 1994. Those examples are the integrated Mediterranean programs and the cohesion fund. In 1985, when the Iberian enlargement was approaching, the European Council sped up the adoption of the integrated Mediterranean programs. Their goal, and I quote, was to support the southern regions of the present community, to improve the economic structure of those regions, to enable them to adjust under the best condition possible to the new situation created by the enlargement. The failure to extend the program to Spain and Portugal after their accession was a confirmation of the real purpose of that tool, preparing Italy, Greece and the south of France to the Iberian enlargement and to maintain their advantage towards those countries. Obviously, the first answer adopted by the newcomers was to strike back at the less than friendly welcome received. During Maastricht negotiation, Spain and Portugal promoted an alliance with Greece and Ireland, mainly against Italy, on the issue of the cohesion fund. The protocol on economic and social cohesion established a fund in the fields of environment and trans-European networks in the member state, and I quote, with a per capita GMP of less than 90% of the community average, which have a program leading to the fulfillment of the condition of economic convergence. The real master stroke was to adopt the national per capita GMP to access the fund and not the regional one, as would have made more sense in the context of cohesion. Italy, a country with huge regional disparities, but also with significant levels of economic wealth, had a GMP higher than the fixed limit of 90%. Thus, Italy and their poor southern regions were excluded. It was a clear point in favor of Spain, able to take full advantage of the negotiation weakness of Italy. The only result of those rivalries and divisions, and I'm coming to the third final question 
of my contribution was to benefit the others. In the case of the cohesion fund, the southern countries facilitate the linking of the path towards the single currency union to the monetarist approach of Germany. In September 1994, there was a dramatic step forward when German tourists published a paper on European integration issues in which they strongly called for a two-speed Europe through the establishment of a hard kernel to create, and I quote, a consolidated fulcrum to counteract the centrifugal forces caused by a continuous enlargement and to prevent a far divergent development between a Southeast group more inclined to protectionism aided by France and another group based on the Northeast in favor of direct and global free trade led by Germany. Members of the core group had to be Germany, of course, together with France, Belgium, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Denmark and Ireland, according to Gold's party. No space for Southern Europe countries that, on the contrary, were marked as one of the main causes of the lack of integration. If the idea of a double-speed Europe was not new in the history of European integration, what makes the paper interesting from the perspective of this contribution was the decision to include Belgium with its huge public debt higher in percentage than Italy's. This inclusion seemed to confirm that the two-speed Europe proposed by Wolfgang Schäuble one of the two extensors of the paper and the current German Minister for Finance was structured according to a geopolitical cleavage, North versus South, and not as argument on the health of public finances. Thus, the first definition of South in the European Union was not positive and it was merely focused on the fulfillment of the economic convergence. While the deadline for the third step of economic and monetary union was approaching, conflict increased. Spain, Italy, Portugal and Greece began to be called the poor relations of the family or with the offensive acronym of PIGS or the club made countries to highlight their role as mere providers of sun, sea, good food and wine, perhaps with some reasons. There was no common reaction to this contraposition from the South. On the contrary, the southern countries started another internal struggle to try to establish better relationship with Brussels and Berlin in a sort of war among the poor, mutually damaging. Coming to the conclusions, one of the first remarks to do, in my opinion, is to underline that when we speak about the troubles of the southern countries in the European integration history, such in the case of the single currency union, it is necessary to remember that the most part of them joined more than 30 years later since the process began. They joined, in other words, in a club thought and designed by others. From the Schumann Declaration to the Southern Enlargement, the EEC had come a long way and passed through some crucial events, such as the Treaties of Rome, the so-called empty chain crisis, the relaunch of the Ark, the birth of the European Council, and the first direct election of the European Parliament, without a relevant presence from the south of Europe. Surely, when they have had the chance to influence the process, they have not coped. The double vicious circle of the internal rivalries and external contraposition have produced dramatic divisions in the European Union intended to worsen relationships and the very essence itself of the European project, namely the overcoming of Europe's traumatic 20th century. And this is what happened with the outbreak of the economic and financial crisis, a framework actually worsened by the instability of the Mediterranean area and by the subsequent increase of the migrant flows. United we stand, divided we fall, that is the point, and I'm worried that the most part of the European national governments, starting from those ones in London and Berlin, have not the necessary awareness. Thank you.